I love zombies. I think they're great. And others must think them great as well, given the role in popular culture. And that is what I want to talk about. Zombies in popular culture. Before I begin, some of you might be wondering, what exactly is a zombie? Okay, probably not, as I'm sure most of you know what a zombie is. Although, there are several different kinds of zombies. We have voodoo zombies, fantasy zombies, viral zombies, and the Romero zombies. Voodoo zombies are resurrected corpses who do the bidding of the resurrector, and these have been around for a long time, preceding Romero zombies. Fantasy zombies, like what you might see in Dungeons and Dragons, are corpses reanimated by magic and do the bidding of the masters. They're not smart, but they can wield weapons and perform simple actions. Viral zombies and Romero zombies are similar in nature. Both desire to eat human flesh, and if they bite you, you'll become one of them. Where they differ is that the viral zombie is the product of some virus or contagion, while the Romero zombie has unknown origins. Moreover, in the Romero universe, if you die by any means, you'll come back as a zombie, even if you're not infected. This is not the case for the viral zombie. There are more types of zombies that exist, but in this video I'll mostly be talking about the viral zombies and the Romero zombies. In my mind, they're both modern zombies, so I'll be referring to them as such moving forward. So when was the first instance of the modern zombie? I would argue that one of the first instances of the modern zombie was in Herbert West Reanimator, an HP Lovecraft novel written in the early 1920s. That said, I think most people would say that Night of the Living Dead was the first time we saw the Romero zombie. And in case it wasn't clear, people call them Romero zombies because Night of the Living Dead was directed by George Romero. Romero directed a whole host of other zombie movies, including the critically acclaimed Dawn of the Dead, which I believe to be the catalyst for popularizing zombies in the early 80s. Not only was Dawn of the Dead very well received, it did gangbusters at the box office. And in its wake, there was a whole slew of new zombie movies released, including a sequel, Day of the Dead, Zombie 2, and The Return of the Living Dead. Interest in zombies began to die down in the mid to late 80s, as evidenced by the lack of notable zombie movies released in that time. Come the mid-90s, however, and zombies were on their way to becoming popular again. By the 2000s, they were a global phenomenon. But how did zombies become that popular? What inspired the global enthusiasm for zombies? According to Romero, video games have popularized the zombies much more than the films. This is interesting to me, as I've always just assumed that it was the zombie movies and zombie movies alone that were responsible for zombies having a presence in popular culture. The first zombie games came out in 1984-ish, but they didn't really have much reach. There were some notable zombie games from the mid 80s to the early 90s like Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Corpse Killer, though I'd say none of these had a cultural impact. It wasn't until 1996 when both Resident Evil and The House of the Dead were released that waves started to be made in zombie popular culture. I think the influence of Resident Evil is pretty intuitive. It was released directly on home consoles and the games did extremely well. Between the first three games alone, 10 million units were sold, which is astronomical. That, and the series is still going strong to this day, which wouldn't have happened if it weren't so influential. The House of the Dead's influence seems less intuitive, especially considering how it was an arcade game and it currently has a much smaller presence than Resident Evil. However, arcades were quite popular back in the 90s, especially in Japan. The House of the Dead was a hot commodity for arcades. I remember as a child that almost all of the arcades I went to would have a House of the Dead machine. The popularity of both franchises inspired a number of Asian zombie films, such as Bile Zombie, Wild Zero, Junk, and more. It's worth noting that both Resident Evil and The House of the Dead were developed in Japan, therefore leading to a popularity in zombie films in Asia before the rest of the world. In the early 2000s, we saw the release of 28 Days Later, The Dawn of the Dead Remake, Shaun of the Dead, some Resident Evil movies, and a couple House of the Dead movies. With the exception of The House of the Dead, all these did very well at the box office. In the case of House of the Dead, it sort of became a cult classic in its own right, as it veered into the it's so bad it's good category. I mean, look at this. I guess, if anything, it matches the cheesiness of the games. Please, help him! Don't kill me! There was nothing we could do. Anyways, the influx of so many high profile zombie movies catapulted zombies to the global stage. But what inspired these movies in the first place? 
Well, the Resident Evil and House of the Dead movies are obvious, they're based on the games. And it turns out that Resident Evil also inspired both 28 Days Later and Shaun of the Dead. Alex Garland, the writer of 28 Days Later, had this to say. Sometimes 28 Days Later is credited with reviving the zombie genre in some respect, but actually, I think it was Resident Evil that did it, because I remember playing Resident Evil, having not really encountered zombies for quite a while, and thinking, oh my god, I love zombies. I had forgotten how much I love zombies. These are awesome. And in the case of Shaun of the Dead, Edgar Wright says that the idea for the movie came from a single episode of Space. In one episode, Simon Pegg's character takes a dose of bad speed and stays up all night playing Resident Evil 2, which causes him to hallucinate that he's actually fighting zombies. Edgar Wright commented, The zombie scene was the last thing we did, and I remember being in the cab with Simon on the way to the rap party and saying, Hey, we should do a whole zombie film. It is worth mentioning, however, that while both movies were influenced by Resident Evil to some extent, they were also influenced by the Romero films, particularly Dawn of the Dead. And speaking of which, the Dawn of the Dead remake was created with the intention of doing the original version justice and also introducing it to modern audiences. While the original version would certainly be the biggest source of inspiration to the remake, it was also influenced by running zombies in 28 Days Later. Movies such as Invasion of the Body Snatchers, The Thing, and The Fly were likewise influences for the remake as co-producer Eric Newman wanted the remake to supplement the original rather than diminish it. Other notable pieces of zombie media, such as The Walking Dead, The Zombie Survival Guide, and World War Z were all mostly inspired by Romero's works, most likely the original Dawn of the Dead. Max Brooks, author of The Zombie Survival Guide and World War Z, has gone on to say that he is inspired by other zombie movies, such as Zombie 2. Zombieland, though, was actually inspired by Shaun of the Dead, which makes sense given that both are comedies. So, all of that to say, it's pretty reasonable to state that zombie games influenced movies to some degree, although by the mid-2000s most people had a pretty well-defined idea of what a zombie was, so I'd argue that anything after the mid-2000s was inspired by zombie pop culture in general. In any case, I'd probably pick Resident Evil as the biggest contributor to zombie pop culture as far as video games are concerned. The House of the Dead also contributed, but on a much lesser degree than Resident Evil. But if Resident Evil and the House of the Dead had an influence on zombie popular culture, then what inspired those two games? Resident Evil, by and large, was inspired by a game called Sweet Home that was released in 1989. To give some additional context, Sweet Home was a movie that came out in the same year, which then had a video game adaptation released. The Sweet Home movie was a poltergeist movie more than anything else, where it was the game that featured zombies. Resident Evil borrowed a lot from the Sweet Home game. In fact, Resident Evil was actually intended to be a remake of Sweet Home, but Capcom didn't have the license so it became Resident Evil instead. It is worth noting at the very beginning of Resident Evil's development, the game was going to be focused on ghosts. However, director Shinji Mikami decided to go for something a little more accessible, so he went with zombies. Mikami had always liked zombies. He remembered watching Dawn of the Dead in junior high and watching the character struggle with them. Mikami goes on to name the Texas Chainsaw Massacre as another influence, as in both Resident Evil and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the protagonist enter a spooky house near the beginning. Mikami also states that he thinks some of the sudden visceral horror of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre lives on in the hunter enemy of Resident Evil. Moreover, Resident Evil was influenced by Alone in the Dark, if on a more technical level. Capcom at the time was inexperienced with 3D projects and weren't able to get the graphical fidelity desired for the game. This was when Mikami saw Alone in the Dark and had the inspiration to use pre-rendered backgrounds and the rest is history. The House of the Dead, on the other hand, was initially inspired by The X-Files and the 1995 crime thriller 7. The development team was wondering if they could develop a gun game that didn't have a cop theme, yet still dealt with serious subject matter, like The X-Files and 7. The development team didn't do any specific research while creating The House of the Dead, though they did watch a lot of unspecified zombie movies, which I assume would include Romero's Dawn of the Dead, but I can't find confirmation on that. The team was aware of Resident Evil, but they made a conscious effort to not let Resident Evil influence them as they felt the House of the Dead and Resident Evil offered up different experiences. The most interesting influence on the House of the Dead though would be Star Trek. One of the developers saw a monster on Star Trek and then drew it for the rest of the development team, which resulted in one of the zombies looking like a Star Trek monster. If I were to guess, I would say that it was this zombie that was inspired by the Borg in Star Trek. So there you have it. If we look again at what Romero had to say, I think zombies became popular because of Resident Evil, and because of the House of the Dead, and because of video games more than anything else. I could see why he would think this. Indeed, it seems like it was 28 Days Later that really kickstarted the zombie craze, and 28 Days Later definitely was inspired by Resident Evil. While 28 Days Later was also inspired by the Romero movies, it was Resident Evil that nudged Alex Garland to make a zombie movie in the first place. Had 28 Days Later not been made, it's possible that some of the other zombie movies, like the Dawn of the Dead remake, wouldn't have been made. But even if 28 Days Later hadn't been made, Resident Evil still would have existed, 
So I would agree with Romero that Resident Evil, and to a lesser extent, The House of the Dead, were responsible for the global popularity of zombies. While there were other pieces of media that contributed to zombies' popularity, I would say that the games did the heavy lifting. And while I would say that games were responsible for making zombies popular, I would credit George Romero as the number one influence for zombie media. I mean, so many movies were influenced by the original Dawn of the Dead. Or if they weren't influenced by Dawn of the Dead, then they were influenced by something that was influenced by Dawn of the Dead. Even Resident Evil and The House of the Dead, I would argue, were heavily influenced by Dawn of the Dead. It's hard to imagine zombies being as popular as they were if Romero never made his iconic movies. If Resident Evil and The House of the Dead never existed, then I don't think zombies would have had a resurgence in the mid-2000s, but I also don't think the games themselves would have existed without Dawn of the Dead. So I guess in a roundabout way, Romero was still somewhat responsible for bringing zombies to a global audience. Though that's like saying that the ancient Romans were responsible for today's society, which might be a bit of a leap in logic, but I think holds elements of truth to it. And finally, for entertainment's sake, if I were to rank the top three influential pieces of zombie media, in order they would be the original Dawn of the Dead, then Resident Evil, followed by 28 Days Later. Zombies aren't as popular today as they were in the mid-2000s. While they certainly still have a presence, it's not as large as it used to be. Why this is the case I'm not entirely sure, but if I were to guess, I'd imagine it was because people started to get tired of them in both movies and games. Case in point, when the developers were making the Resident Evil 2 remake, which was released in 2019, they had this to say. The problem we have to face with the remake is that 90s zombies have become so standard across all genres of fiction and media, like movies, games, and TV. We've kind of hit peak zombie, and it's come and gone. You can't just show zombies on screen and be like, okay, be scared. People are used to them. And you definitely saw games move away from zombies in the mid-2000s. To me, Resident Evil 4 more or less marked the end of zombies as a common enemy in video games, but that's not something I've researched at all. Maybe that's something I could talk about later, though. Anyways, thanks for listening to me ramble on about zombies for so long. Cheers.